here's the question for you. The company Meta is embarking to integrate its live streaming services across the different applications like Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Gaming, and WhatsApp. The goal is to enable simultaneous video viewing across these platforms while offering a cohesive experience for the live comments. This unified commenting system requires the capability for comments to be persistent. That is, they need to be reviewed later for analytics and also support interactive features such as reactions. And this has to be done from users across all platforms. Additionally, it's crucial that the reaction counts are updated and displayed in real time to all the viewers. How would you approach designing a system capable of processing and displaying playing real-time data across multiple platforms. So my name is Ravi. I have more than 11 years of experience, currently working as a senior software engineer at a bank company. Uh, Skanda, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Ravi. My name is Skanda. I'm a software developer at a bank company. Wonderful. On that note, let's get started with the question. So I'll quickly go over it, try to understand uh, what is the ask, and then I may have a few uh, clarifying questions for you. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Quickly going uh, forward. So. Uh, we want to store and unify the, this data. Are we supposed to like reveal or able to link user from other platform? What I mean for this is I am watching on Instagram and you come in from Facebook and I like your comment. I want to converse with you. Is that possible that, okay, I can, I can click on your name or photo and then able to connect to you. Is, is that allowed here or it's just like, it will be static and just be like, okay, Ravi from, from Facebook has commented, but, you can only interact on the comment down there, but not directly. Yeah, I would say I would say that uh, while that uh, is allowed, the focus for this particular question, I would say, uh, is more on how you can have those all those comments which are coming from different applications. So just to clarify, like the, the the requirement which you are talking about, that is more of like a user kind of a thing, user facing kind of thing. But uh, as one of the requirements of this question. We are looking to capture whatever comments are made on all those different platforms. It is not necessary that users across the, I would say users across the different uh, uh, platform will be able to see the comments made from you know, inter, inter platform kind of a comments. That is essentially not necessary. For example, if I am I am using Instagram, I'm watching a video. It's okay that if I watch only the comments made from Instagram, it's not necessary that I should be, I should also, uh, have access to the comments made from Facebook, but from a backend system, if you, uh, if I can clarify more on that, whatever comments you are getting, let's say someone made a comment from Facebook, someone made a comment from Instagram and all those stuff. We are looking at capturing the data, these comments, the data that is this comments from all these different sources and ingest them or maybe have them in a persistent way so that we can carry out some analytics on that. That's one of the things obviously for this question. The other part of this question, is that we need to support interactive features like uh, 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 I would say um, uh, the reactions and all. So that thing you can think of it like that is separate to the platform. So while from the user aspect, you don't need to merge the user experience uh, across all these different platforms, you can keep it individualistic, limited to those individual applications. But when it comes to analyzation of the comments and all those, uh, the, 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 that unified comment part, I think from the backend side, we are looking at having that uh, that that kind of a system which can take the comments from all these different sources, have them in a in a data so like uh, in a storage uh, storage layer uh, for the persistence, so that we can carry out some analytics on that. Got it. Thank you for clarifying. I, I get the picture uh, clearer now. So uh, I'll go with a few assumptions that each of these uh, platforms now have their own uh, video, but uh, now uh, we are showing one stream of that video to every user across all the platforms and we want to capture that. So I'll quickly jump into like understanding the kind of data that we want to capture. So I would say that uh, uh, let's just put as a data requirement here. So we want a user ID or some, some kind of user identification uh, from any platform. So to identify user, it could be a profile or something. And we want uh, the platform that they are coming from. Uh, this, this is important because it helps us understand in analytics, which of the social platforms are higher and uh, in numbers. And uh, then because end of the day, uh, if we want to, increase the engagement of any user across any of these platforms or all of these platforms and we want them all to grow so we uh, this will help us understand 
uh, where the user is coming from and how many users are coming, especially with uh, the analytics involved in later stages. Uh, this is a valuable uh, information, I believe, is required for us. Sure. Okay. All uh, right. And then we actually want a uh, comment. Uh, we would comment would be comment. Uh, we can say is now uh, it can be a sub, its own table. Uh, and uh, why? Because comment is not just a comment. We need some metadata for that as well. So we'll have a comment ID. We will have the user ID who posted the comment. We will have a timestamp. Uh, we want to understand the order of the comments as well. Uh, this can also have a parent comment ID. What my what I mean by parent comment ID is some of the comments can be nested. If we are having an interaction over a particular subject, people usually want to nest those comments to have the context in there. So we'll have something like this. A parent ID. Something, uh, like, it, a, something like a thread you mean, right? Uh, a, a thread of comments. Yes, yes, that's true. Then we also want reaction. Uh, reactions again this is a table uh, similar to comment id so we'll have a reaction id and facebook as of now supports five reactions if i'm not wrong and to keep it very simple we can just say reaction type where this could be a this could be either a number to enumerate or it could be a, a, a string type to like indicate hard like and sad and so on and so forth uh, and comments are uh, reactions are uh, uh, are tied to something. So we would tie it to a parent entity. Uh, so why entity parent could be the video itself where the user is comment reacting on the video or they could be uh, commenting, uh, so they could be reacting on a comment itself. Uh, like you left a comment and I want to react to that. So we want to capture which user reacted to which comment and also we need the timestamp. There is one more feature. I would just name it as of now, but I would not go in implementation of this. We have seen that users can undo their actions, both comment and reaction, which would mostly be a soft delete for legal purposes and auditing purposes later, where the, we, we take it out from the user's view, but we still store it in the backend. I would just mention it because that's also required for systems, but I would not go and implement as of now to just increase the complexity and will probably not be in, uh, in the time space that we have for today. Is that okay to assume? Yeah, I think that should be okay. Now seeing this, um, I want to, uh, so as of now we have platform, user ID, reaction, comment. Going back to the question, uh, we want to integrate from different places. We want to persist it. We'll talk about persisting and we'll talk about which uh, uh, storage type we want and how we want to do it. But as of now, I'm trying to uh, make sure that I have listed down the requirements just in terms of the data uh, itself, uh, data and metadata. So we need comments and we need reactions and these are on videos. So I believe uh, this should be sufficient. We'll also have the video uh, here, which is a table, but this is not that important for us to build on. We will say, assume this exists uh, because our goal is not to build a video analytics platform. Our goal is to build a platform to capture reactions and comments on an existing video. So I'll just say yep. this exists and we would be referencing this either in the reaction parent entity ID or in the comments uh, parent comment ID. So this is how we would tie a particular comment to video. Why? Because any given point of time, it's not just one video being broadcasted and users are commenting or engaging with it there could be thousands and sometimes millions maybe if it's a if it's like a festival kind of thing saint patrick's day or new year's or something else then there's lots of videos going around and we want to capture all of this so that's that's my idea to have the video table and there may be other uh metadata in the video table which the data scientists or analysts want to then tie down to the the reactions and comments itself so so far so good let me know if this holds true or if you see any any downsides to this particular things that we are capturing so uh, one question that i have this user id um, so user id uh, and platform let's say platform id let's call that platform id so are these are these part of a different table or like uh, uh, what exactly is that or as is that an identifier in the in the comment data which you are capturing like what can you explain on yeah, that? Yeah, good, good question, Ravi. I just recall that I, 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 I hastily moved forward. So this would be a table by itself. 
big and mm -hmm. we would have similar to uh, the comments in this we would have a user id which is unique across uh, entire facebook entity uh, and we can have we, and and i'm sure the engineers we would have designed it that way or we can always tag it as fp underscore user id ign screw id if if at all they are not unique across the entire facebook ecosystem but this will have user id the all the other metadata like name and like join date and so on and so forth this will lots and lots uh either we can create a uh, another user table or we can uh, ref uh, sorry we can reference an already existing table there are downsides and uh, pros and cons to this the downside is we may we may be we may end up carrying a lot of information that is not required for our use case. But the pro is we do not have to reinvent the wheel and go about like, okay, what all user features that we may need or not need. So it's a trade-off decision we have to make if we have to launch to market within like some X number of weeks. We may not have the liberty to build this user table. And this already exists. And Facebook being... Uh, uh, running for 20 plus years, I'm sure they would have refined and refined and refined. Or we can also connect to other PMs, other teams who might have done something similar. They took it from a main database and then they took a sub part of it and we can always learn from them how to do it. So I would say we need a user table internally, but it comes down to a trade-off decision. Would we reuse an existing one? Would we take a subset or we would build a new one? If at all, there is something lacking in that user table. Why we want to build a new one? It may not be feasible for us to ask them or request them, hey, user, user team data, user team, can you please add this new dimension for us? It may be way too expensive for them to add it and scale it because Facebook has billions of users and even this small change is of a large magnitude. So that's that's where I'm going uh, with the trade-offs, but let me know uh, uh, what you feel about it. I think that's good enough, good enough. Uh, I'm assuming platform will also be a table um, yes. here. Um, so uh, yeah, while you can, while you're elaborating on the on the data, like data model of the platform table, I just wanted to understand a bit that um, what kind of a what kind of a database do you think is suitable? Like, are you looking for a SQL database here? No SQL database here? Yes, that's a good question, Ravi. I would say the uh, slowly changing ones like user and platform uh, uh, and possibly video, but we are not concerned about video, so I skip this for now. I will only talk about these four. Uh, one through four user and platform i would keep it a relational sql database and there is a, a, a reason to this this is slowly changing there is, this is a read heavy versus a write heavy we are querying the data lots of times rather than updating any of it and it may be the reason that platform is very rarely updated. The cadence of platform updates versus the cadence of user updates is orders of magnitude different. So definitely platform, this would be a SQL uh, database relational. So this will also be a SQL. The reason being, we are not getting lots of updates to user table. And this is specifically the metadata where we, we have information like my name, my date of birth, my current city, and so on and so forth. These are slowly changing in, in this particular use case. So I would go with SQL for these two first. And on top of this, to make it even more simpler, we can we can have caching at different layers. Uh, so that's that's my uh, take about these two tables. I'll come to the next two after we, we, we uh, arrive at a decision for this. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, so you say SQL. So precisely, like all both these tables will be in the same same SQL database is what I'm assuming. Uh, yes, this will be under the same database because we want to be able to connect these two. Uh, there would be probably mm -hmm. some joins required, so uh, mm -hmm. we will have uh, uh in under the same database. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and. Uh, uh, okay, let's just let's just get done with the type of database uh, for the remaining also. Meanwhile, I'll think of a question which I might have here. Okay, and now coming to these two ones, uh, the speed of uh, writes here on write, I mean uh, the persisting or like we are storing. So whenever users are commenting and reacting, it will be way too fast and. Uh, 
this is the the need of this to start with is first to like capture and then to display it in real time so to capture this uh, i would go with something like an append only because very rarely we are going back and uh, uh, updating uh, this or we could say for this version one we are not supporting edits as of now uh, we just go with append only uh, we are not letting users uh, edit their comments uh, or delete as of now. Uh, I know it's it's a little controversial, but but to keep it simple for this purpose of this um, session, I'll, I'll go with that assumption. And I'll go with uh, a NoSQL database uh, for like an append only. Uh, and there could be multiple options that we can pick here. So, but I'll go with NoSQL for two reasons. One is the speed uh, and uh, distributed nature because we can, we can partition it in a such a way that either we could partition with the platform or we could partition based on the uh, user ranges. What I mean by ranges is like, we can partition it based on user names, uh, like first names. Uh, and we also understand, because we have other analytics data from before, we, we understand how many users are appearing alphabetically between maybe O to like S and so on and so forth. We can use that as well. There are different strategies to to like partition this. Why partition? Because one particular database may not be having enough throughput and bandwidth to consume all of the incoming uh, writes. Uh, so I want to partition it. Uh, I want to distribute a database here. And uh, one more advantage being that if something goes down, so if a particular node in the distributed uh, database goes down, it has inbuilt capabilities to like, uh, self-correct what i mean by that is bring up a new node to make up for that loss and in the meanwhile other nodes would be capturing this data so they will fill in for the node that went down uh yeah i know i spoke a lot but but how uh, what does that does that make sense for this particular choice yeah yeah i i i think it makes sense fine uh, I, I i would i might have some feedback but we'll discuss that at the end but i think it makes sense whatever you you justified for this yeah Okay, so we I would go this for both of this. Okay, and now I I also so this these are the capturing only. So these were all capturing, and now we come to processing. Uh, are we good to like go to processing now? Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, uh, coming back to the question, we are saying that hey, uh, we want to count, we want to persist. I am uh of the understanding that these databases are uh, not ephemeral, we, we can store it. Uh, so I, I, I believe that our persistent requirement is taken care of in this one. If mm -hmm. not, we can have one more processing or in the processing stage, we will have two different streams. Uh, and this is not streaming data. This is just the two streams or two branches. One branch would go to persist in, in something like a, uh, document DB or an S3 or somewhere else, if we want to, if if we believe that our database is of limited capacity, we don't want to always store this because there's nothing changing in this. So that is one option to like persist it. And the other branch would go on for the processing. What I mean by the processing is we want to update our um, comments and reactions and display it back to the user. So two, two branches is what I'm considering processing. It just, it just depends of what we make of this database that we cho chose for number three and four. Uh, if we can choose to keep all the data in here, or if it is expensive, we can move it to a, a cold storage uh, for lack of better word. Uh, make sense? Mm, yeah, uh, but in uh, what situation? Okay, let's 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 talk from a, um, uh, a request journey perspective. Um, where would the comment, let's say if a comment is made, where would it land in the processing? Uh, uh, section like what are the components that you are thinking of first of all okay i'm assuming we already have an r2 to build it very quickly we'll have clients most would be like mobile uh, applications or users from mobile mm -hmm. app and some would be browsers as mm -hmm. well these people are interacting with the uh the video now we would have our our browsers and our sorry our uh, yeah, our uh, web application on browsers and also the phone applications would have the capabilities in terms of like APIs uh, to like instruct 
or like communicate with the servers at Facebook and or Meta's end that, hey, uh, I as a user one, I am in, I interacted with this video. So it sends a request uh, and says that, okay, for this video, I reacted this. So this would be one particular data that is sent to our servers. Now, this will again be like scaled up and everything. So it will have load balancers before the uh, servers and the servers itself will be like uh, in, in an API gateway, wherein we would send comments to one, one type of servers and reactions to other type of servers. And each of this will be scaled up uh, and, and, and horizontally scaled as well. So be why? Because we'll have millions of interactions with one video. And these are not, these servers are not tied to a video. These servers are independent of the video. They would just say, hey, this user said they interacted with this video with this particular engagement and the engagement being a comment or a reaction. So this is the flow of one of the uh, interactions coming from a user's end to our uh, our backend servers. And this uh, now, this, this is the first stage of processing. First, we would do some validations on top of that. Uh, as like uh, it's an, a live video or not, because sometimes it may be a network uh, law network lag where the user interacted, but they did, did, didn't reach us it, within the live session time. So we will do some validations on that sort, and there could be more as well. And after that, we would send it to uh, our database. So the NoSQL database, we would send it to us. Now there are two, two uh, or there are more than one ways to do it. It just depends on which of it is scaled up more or less. So for example, our backend servers are way too scaled up and our database is of limited in incoming capacity. We can have something like a asynchronous communication between our web servers and database in the form of pops up or messaging queue. And uh, one of the examples of that is Kafka. Why, why this? So uh, why we want something like, which has its own persistence in the messaging queue or a pops up model? There is a possibility that our web server dies, the back one of the web backend server dies, and it the the particular data has not yet made it to the database. We do not want to lose that data because end of the day, data is what helps us make good features, good products, and then have good uh, interactions for our users. So we don't want the data to be lost. So something like a Kafka system that will have persistence inherently and it has a time to live by default it's seven days and seven days is, is way enough for us we don't have to change the default value here so i'll use some of that sort so let me quickly list on the components because i'm the number of components growing here i quickly go from like client it could be an app or a web a browser and uh, we would have a, a load balancer and this can be again fine-tuned as well um and then we'll have an, an API gateway. Why API gateway? We want to direct comments to one family or one form of uh, backend servers. Uh, oh, and uh, another uh, for reactions. So we want to keep it separate. Uh, and it, it may be that reactions are way but the magnitude of reactions are way too much than comments. We do not want to overload one type of server with all the information or all types of re requests. So API gateway will do that directions. We'll have backend servers. So again, these are horizontally scaled uh, and uh, they are uh, specific types as well. So they will handle specific uh, requests. <laughs> I am not able to type <laughs> specific requests. Uh, for uh, uh, comment and reactions. So we'll have that and then we'll have a pub sub model uh, for uh, async uh, data transfer from backend server to our uh, databases or NoSQL database. Uh, and uh, the re the reason for this is so that we don't lose the data uh, in there. And then we'll have our database itself. No SQL. And this will again be a horizontally scaled distributed uh, database uh, with the schema that, uh, I, and I may have to expand the schema because we have to unify it and we have to store the unified data as well where we can run our analytics on. 
uh, and this this is one hour of the comp uh, some components and then we also need stream processor so why stream processor now we come to the second phase of this all of this was the per persisting phase as well uh, persisting phase but you also want to like unify and update comments and reactions to user comments uh, and reactions back to user okay so stream processor let's talk about this now what is the advantage and why we want to use a stream processor it could be something like a spark streaming or something similar and uh, why why are we using a component uh, for stream processing here the idea here or the ask here is our users should be able to see the comments and reactions as soon as possible uh, in their on their end so uh, we want something real time, but in terms of like software engineering, we know there's nothing called real time. It would be near real time. So we are doing our best to satisfy this requirement in the quickest possible time frame uh, as possible. Stream processors allow us to do that. There are two types of processing: batch and stream for analytics. A uh, batch would be like a Hadoop or Spark, and stream would be Spark streaming or something similar. We are going with stream because it allows us to like quickly run some computations on the incoming data and then uh, process it and send send it either to storage or back to an api that can be streamed back to a, a particular user so we uh, there there's one more uh, requirement which i did not list though which i just recall now we need a mapping table what i mean by this is which user is uh, engaged with what video why because i want to be able to send to you ravi hey if you are engaging with this my server needs to identify ravi and send you only the relevant comment and video we want to be able to tie down the engagement back to the user so we need a mapping table and this would again be a database uh it it can it, it can be either in our NoSQL or a SQL as well because the writes uh, would not be too much on this. So this could be a SQL as well, and I believe it will be simpler to keep it SQL because we already have the user and platform there. We can we can quickly pull that data from the same database for this mapping table. Uh, does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. I think uh, yeah, we can move to wrap it up in the interest of time. Uh, for sure. For this uh, for the session sake so uh yeah so how just if you can if you can describe the flow among these components yes. the components seem fine to me if you can just describe the end-to-end -end flow that will be great okay sure so let's let's capture the journey of a particular interaction a uh, video is being played uh ravi as a user is uh is engaged in the video it's an interesting video ravi first reacts hard on the video itself what happens is a request is sent from the client to, uh, it goes through the load balancer, goes through the API gateway, goes to the server. Now in the server, some interesting things happen. The server understand, okay, this is a, this is a React server, backend server that gets it, uh, reactions, uh, and server will, will first identify, verify that, okay, this user is, is uh, logged in, uh, authenticated, and all of those things. And also this is a valid video being played as of now. So first it will create an entry in the mapping table. Okay, Ravi uh, has interacted on this video and it will also capture the platform information because it knows where you are coming from and it will capture the user ID. It will capture the type of reaction like heart or or like or, or, or others. Uh, and then this will be the first one that goes in. After that, it will send it through uh, the uh, PubSub model like Kafka or something to uh, to be persisted to our database so this one is uh, this is just the first phase of it in the second phase if i am also interacting or engaged in the same video there would be a mapping table when i logged in when i started watching the video again the mapping table would have sorry uh, the mapping table would have the entry even before you react the mapping table would have the reactory when you start viewing the stream because people who are not uh, People who are people who are like read only engaging or view only engaging, even they need to be communicated what is happening. So if I have never commented, never reacted, but I'm still watching, I need to be informed from Facebook that okay, this is what is happening. Ravi comment and so on and so forth. So the mapping table will uh, will have an entry as soon as a user starts viewing the video itself. So I, I I'll correct that part. 
And so what happens in the second phase? Okay, the stream processor will pick this up. It will either read from directly from the backend server or it, I mean, it's a choice that we can make either to split it from backend server or split it, uh, or we have a reader, like a change data, uh, change data management or CDC, where any changes that happen in the database, another uh, system will pick it up. So this is the second phase where, okay, the system pick up, okay, user video one, user ID Ravi, uh, from this platform did this particular engagement. So this will be picked up and it will go back to the mapping table and see, and it will select for this particular video, who are all the users interacting for all those users send this out. And we can use something like a fan out or to keep it simple, we can we can have it like, okay, send this back to the user, like a server side events. There is a, there is a protocol for server side events where the user may not be doing requiring to poll it back and forth back and forth the server is just sending you request something like a notification system you can say and uh, i would i would see that okay there's a new heart appearing on on the video as a reaction and coming forth this is this is the journey that will go through uh, for a reaction and comments will be similar as well and nested comments will be like uh, again inside that uh, does that make sense all right okay so Thank you so much uh, for this uh, explanation. Let's get into the retrospective and the feedback. So I feel that overall you did a decent job, uh, I would say. You definitely kind of tried to cater to the core requirements that we had about the comments and the reactions. And I think you definitely highlighted the components part really well. Where you captured the right components, I feel. Um, and uh, even the requirements, uh, the data modeling part, I would say. So it was pretty Pretty much, uh, I would say, uh, a good effort there. You supported your choices with the reasoning, the rationals. I like that part. A uh, few things which I feel, uh, you know, can further elevate your performance. If let's say it's an actual interview, few things can, that can definitely fetch you more marks on this. One thing which I feel is, uh, given the requirement, it might be good to check who are the users who will be involved with this analytical part of things. Uh, so for example, you are dumping all that comments, fine. The data source, you understand that you are you are capturing that in a NoSQL database and, and all that flow is fine. But then for requirement of this question, uh, we were focused that we persist the comments and then it will be used for analytical purpose. So I, purpose. So I think uh, a potential question can be that a clarification can be that who are the people who are, who are trying to do this analytics? Or, so according to that, then you can maybe land into the analytical part of thing. While your uh, read heavy and write heavy choices definitely made sense uh, according to that, but um, a bit on the a bit on the schema, if you would have also kind of attached that with the reasoning, I think that would have added a lot more value to the choice of the database. You may want to kind of you know when it comes to user journey, instead of uh, first talking about taking time to talk about all the components and then going about establishing that flow, I think it will it might may save you some time if you directly talk about the flow and which components are coming in at what stage. I think that will definitely save you time while explaining that part. So that will be uh, all the feedback from my side. Uh, I would like to know your thoughts. Um, how, how do you feel? Uh, any, any, any questions that you might have? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much for the detailed feedback and uh, looking back, it makes uh, so much sense. And I definitely agree with you. The designs, uh, interviews are, are, are of like uh, open end one. And I agree with you. Like, we could have ended up with just the analytics part or just capturing and uh, sh showing them in real time part. So there are two journeys that we can take uh, in this way. Uh, one of Absolutely. the things, yeah. yes. Uh, one of Absolutely. the things uh, from my uh, side, I would say is like, uh, uh, yeah, adding on to the improvement parts that you mentioned, I would say probably reducing the time on the requirements itself with that gives us more time, more time for me to expand on the implementation or the designing part. That is one, and again, numbers. Uh, and uh, one more thing is like, um, when I make a choice, I, I I mentioned the other thing that I, alternative that I considered, but why I went with this uh, and justify that, probably writing it down makes more sense uh, because I'm mm -hmm. speaking so much, sometimes uh, I want to capture the essentials. Uh, so that, right, that is right. what I could do better. Uh, and uh, the user journey for sure. Uh, without uh, you being having to ask for user journey, I would say, okay, this is the requirement. This is what the system we have designed. And let's just see now, are we able to go end to end for this and satisfying our requirement or not? Because end of the day, we may have the sophisticated of the systems, but if one of the plumbing is missing and our data is not flowing, that entire system is of no use to the stakeholder that you mentioned about, like mm -hmm. who is wanting to use the system. So I think those are the things that uh, I can 
I have to like uh, correct or like uh, add on to. Uh, but it should it should be feasible to like fix those parts sooner because as you mentioned, the technicalities are making sense in your view, and it's it's not that uh, the system is uh, not uh, uh, catering to the requirement itself. We 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 were able to design a system that that more or less did one part of it, which is the capturing and showing. The other part, analytics, we did not uh, speak about much. So uh, your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree on that. Uh, definitely, like uh, uh, just uh, balancing out the time a bit and then capturing the essentials. I think I'll definitely agree on that while you are explaining a lot more things, but then capturing the essential, which will be helpful for the interviewer to kind of, uh, you know, make the judgment. And uh, a bit on the technical side, if I just have to give a final thought, uh, I think from the real time aspect, what it was highlighting, I like the part that you talked about Kafka, but you can expect maybe the interviewer might be interested in a bit more details like, okay, can you tell me a bit on the what will be the topics what will be good topics to base the uh, base on in kafka what will be the partitions and all so you can definitely expect the questions to go in that direction uh, maybe maybe the topics can be based on the platforms uh, the partitions can be based on on the video id maybe uh, and and accordingly it will help you uh, sorry uh, uh, you know it will help you give a very quick count of the reactions based for each video since it will be based on partitions will be on video ID and all so it might help you to, to do that quick uh, uh, coming up with that quick analysis of uh, some like the the some yeah, parties yeah, yeah. involved here so adding I up all the, the back of yeah. my mind uh, wherein I partition first on platform then on video because then aggregation right. will be very simple to like bring it up very and simple. then do aggregation across all of the data at once absolutely I think yeah, all of that. This is a really good discussion. I think definitely it's nothing which is uh, which should not be feasible, but a bit more with a bit more polishing. I think all of all of that would be a great great answer. I would say in, a, in an actual interview. So I have I have one question uh, just as a concluding uh, remarks to this uh, this particular question. Like, uh, what did you learn? What did you learn out of all this exercise? This question in particular, which we solved just now. Anything you would like to share about your learning? Uh, yeah, sure, Ravi. Yeah. One of it is like the realization that we may be designing systems on our day jobs, but when it comes to like these sort of things, we can always, uh, we, we can end up in any branch uh, uh, in here. Like there are so many things we can deep dive on. Uh, I think you touched upon a one part, which is like the deep dive may end up in the Kafka. Like how do you pick your topics? How do you partition it? How do you ensure that your aggregations are happening in a, uh, latency respected manner as well they're able to scale what if like suddenly thousands of people want to like go live and then how would your right. kafka scale there that is one part so i i i what i learned from this is like there are so many different ways to go about this so it's important and essential for an interviewee to be have a broad scope of different system components choices trade-offs and why we are making something a same system that we built for 10,000 users may not be the same system we need for millions or billions of users, even though they may be doing the same thing. But when it comes to non-functional one, the choices of the components will differ and matter a lot. So that's one thing I learned. And second is like, after having bread, you also want to understand which of the, uh, what is the core problem here? The core problem is by platform aggregation, by video aggregation, and showing it back to the user in almost near real time. So how do we make that happen? So pick on those core and deep dive on those core parts. And it's okay to say, I am not an expert in one of the regions. Maybe I would say, hey, I am i don't know how an app would uh, get the reaction compared to a web browser. I can say, okay, the web browser, I would use a server side uh, events, SAC to, to give the, reactions and comments back to the user. But I, I probably don't know how to do it on an app, but it's okay because again, we are in a collaborative environment uh, on a team. We, we can go to one of the Android or iOS engineers or, or like a mobile expert, which who can help us do this. Uh, they, as long as we are able to send the data in, in a format that client understands, they would be able to design and implement that. So I think it's uh, what I learn here is to, to be uh, open, honest, vulnerable and say, Okay, these are the things I will focus on and, and and some things we assumed as well. So in the start, we said, hey, for video, we'll say it exists already. It's okay because we as a team would not be building everything on our own. There will be parts of it existing. We build on top of that and some, sometimes we borrow, sometimes we also lend and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I gave a very long answer, but this is kind of the learning and realization I had after I solved this question.
No, I think I think you've definitely brought up some certain good pointers here, and I definitely do agree on on those things. Uh, uh, definitely highlighting the, the the depth in which the interview can go in 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 the directions it can go, and having a broad sense. I think yes, you also highlighted the uh, expectations from the interviewee, the candidate, what what they can prepare upon, and I really cannot agree more on the part that yes, doing it in a real in a job is a different part, but. Uh, interviews are, are are a different ball game altogether. Like you, they kind of definitely need some 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 skills there. And mock interview sessions are are the best uh, preparation one can have for an actual interview. So I totally agree by all all the pointers. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I do have one cool. question though. Uh, like 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 I I always have a few questions back to uh, the interviewer as well. If if you have time. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so uh, just going with this particular uh, scenario, if, if you were the stakeholder and asking for this, what are some of the uh, compromises you would be okay to make for the speed of implementation, like in your analytics side? I would say when you talk about compromises, um, uh, while, you know, uh, so requirement side, okay. I would say I would be more focused on, you know, uh, capturing, capturing the comments and reactions in the real time, like, user will be my primary focus obviously so even if i am not capturing the entire details as far as like if there is any challenge to capturing the complete details which can help me do the analytics part well if there are challenges to that i can compromise it on that but i would not compromise any user feature or any feature on the on the user facing side which can help our 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 user experience get better so for example real time interactions real time reaction counts and all I would definitely not compromise on that. I would weigh heavily, in fact, uh, to make that part of the system much better, I would say. Uh, but then again, like uh, uh, analytics are or, uh, and all those parts definitely do come into the long term. However, uh, like, uh, as I said, uh, the user driving from the user's perspective, first make that part of the system where better. Once I'm confident of that part, then I can start making the analytics part of things better. So compromise would be on the analytics part. Uh, I would still focus more on the user's experience, making that better. Got it. Thank you for answering that. And I, I believe it makes sense as well because end of the day, our analytics can only run on the data that exists. But if we are missing on the data, then our analytics will not be fulfilled uh, entirely. Uh, thank you for answering that. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching this particular session. I hope you learned something. If you're interested in more mock sessions, you can check out the YouTube channel where you will find more interesting videos and you will definitely learn something out of them. And if you're interested to prepare more or understand more about the upcoming interviews or similar interviews, you can check out Interview Query where you find you find relevant resources which can help you prepare for your upcoming interviews. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.